We can start by dragging and dropping the object onto the background. We're just going to slightly adjust the scale, position it here, and then double left click to apply. The next important step from here is to identify exactly where the light source is coming from in order to create the most accurate shadow on this object. The easiest way to do this is to have a look at the background and see if you have any indication of shadows, which in this case you can see we barely have any shadows other than this little area right here, a really soft shadow. And this is a high indication that the light source is coming from directly at the top. Now, once you've identified exactly where the light source is, we can start to create the first shadow by using the brush tool. If you select the background, you can create a new layer. And we're just going to customize the brush to have a 100% hardness, adjust the overall shape of the brush, and then slight tilt. You want to make sure you are selecting a black color and left click to create the shadow. You can also press Ctrl or Command and T to scale this, and you can also skew the corners by holding Ctrl and then dragging this in and readjusting the shadow. And then enter to apply the changes. We're just going to tone it down a little bit by lowering the opacity down to, let's say, 87. We're also going to set the effect to multiply. This will blend it with the background. From here, we're going to also soften the edges a little bit more because they are way too sharp at the moment. And we can achieve this by going to filter, going down to blur, and then Gaussian blur. In here, if you start to increase the radius, this will soften the edges. The higher the pixels, the softer this will be. We only want around, let's say, 4.6 or even 5 pixels. We're going to further enhance this and make it better by applying the next shadow. If you select the basketball, we can go to the adjustments and in here you can apply an exposure. We can tone this down to around, let's say, minus one. And we're going to clip it onto the basketball, which will only affect this basketball. Invert this mask by holding Control or Command and I, because this will allow us to go back onto the brush tool lower the size to around, let's say, 900. We're going to also make this brush nice and soft by lowering the opacity down to around, let's say, 30%, and also the flow, because we want to gradually introduce the shadows. We're going to select a white color, gradually add in some shadows right here, in order to make the shadow noticeable, you can change the effect to multiply. You can see the before and after. We're also going to apply another drop shadow near the bottom. What you want to do is you want to hold control, left click on the thumbnail to copy the selection, and we're going to create a new solid. Make sure it's a black color. And by holding shift, you can use the down arrow key to go down two times. We're just going to convert this into a small object, and then we're going to apply a mask. And once again, we're just going to invert it to hide it for the time being. Once again, using the brush tool, we're just going to lower the brush size. And by using a white color, we just want to reveal this area right here. Now, at the moment, this is way too harsh. What we need to do is, same as last time, selecting this layer. We're going to go to Filter, down to Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. For this one, we're just going to soften it up to around, let's say, 6.6 .6 pixels. We just want it nice and subtle. We don't want it to be too soft, but not too aggressive. And there we go. That is definitely looking better now. And then finally, we also need to add in one more shadow near the bottom where it's going to be really dark. This one is also crucial. Now to create this one, what we're going to do is selecting the basketball, go ahead and create a new layer above this one. And by using a black color, we're just going to paint it onto here. Once again, gradually introduce this one. The closer it is to the bottom, the harsher you want it to be. So we're just going to make the brush smaller make it a little bit bigger to spread it out right up to here. 
And then what you want to do is you want to set this one to multiply. And same goes for this one as well. You want to set it to multiply. Now, the great thing about this layer is that we can also adjust the opacity. If it's too harsh, we can soften it up. Same goes for this one. We can just slightly lower it and then this one to 87. Now, so far, so good. We have the shadow, but we also need to include the overexposed area because the subjects in the background are overexposed in certain areas. All we need to do, get yourself the adjustments once again, but make sure you are on the top layer. Go to the exposure. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to clip it onto here. We're going to increase it to a positive one. Same as before, we're going to invert it, control or command an I. And my favorite thing to do when it comes to the spotlight is to use the gradient because with the gradient, you can select a circle gradient. You can set it to a black and white. And if you select this mask, you can left click, drag this out, and this will create a light source. If you change the overall effect to screen, you can see it a lot easier. I would say the light source would be around here and the spread will be somewhere around here. You can also increase the glow. And same as before, we can just slightly decrease the opacity to around, let's say, 87. The final touches that we can do is we can also desaturate this ball because if this image is overexposed and it is really bright, it's going to wash off some of those colors. Now, to achieve this, once again, selecting the basketball, you just want to go to the adjustments and you want to get yourself a hue and saturation. For the overall, Q, you just want to tone it down a little bit to around, let's say, minus 15. We're also going to give ourselves one more desaturate around the light source. Now, in this case, since we've already got the light source mask, we can just hold control, left click on here, and just copy this mask. And by going to the adjustments, once again, Q and saturation. For this one, we're going to double it and make it around, let's say, minus 30. And there we go. That is definitely looking better now. We could flip this onto here, tone some of these down a little bit, let's say to this one as well, slightly lowering the opacity. Here is the before and after. You can see a huge difference 